everyone, and welcome to the BPD Bunch Brunch, where we get together with our favorite brunchy beverages to catch up, play games, and talk about all things BPD. I'm your host, Zanny, and today I am here with Katya, Devin, and Jay. What brunchy beverage does everybody have? Today I have coffee. I just Coffee can't. as well. Yeah, it's boring, but my cup is cute. The cup is very cute. I have a very unseasonal seasonal oh. cup, but I have coffee too. Like, I can't let Halloween go yet. <laughs> I have a collection, Katya, of, like, um, different mugs that I've gotten from different seasons, and I use them all year round. So I'm like, yeah, it's February, oh, but I'm rocking, I'm still rocking my fall <laughs> mugs. Like, <laughs> Really rebelling there. Mm-hmm. So in our main episode this week, we talked about the ninth symptom, two stress-related issues that can come up for people, um, paranoia and dissociation. And we've decided to do two brunch episodes to split that up into different categories. And for our first one, we're doing a dissociation show and tell. What did everybody bring? Okay, so I brought something with me. Um, and it's quite interesting because Jay and Devon have spoken about things that are quite tactile or things that are quite physical. Um, mine's really boring and there's a reason for that. So I have got a copy of the essentials of Russian grammar. Now, <laughs> the reason that I have this with me is that when I am dissociating, I have to do something that is intellectually challenging and usually quite boring or tedious to try and bring me back down to reality. And what could be more boring than the declension of Russian adjectives? So what I do when I'm dissociating <laughs> is I do actually try and recall from memory all of the endings that you put on adjectives in Russian because there are a lot of them and it's quite hard and it takes a really long time. <laughs> so if I can do that, normally the intellectual processes in trying to remember everything will bring me back to what I'm supposed to be doing, um, which is quite an unusual one, but I'm not in any way creative or anything like that. I can't do anything like art or make music or anything that people might normally do to bring them out of dissociation. <laughs> so uh, yeah, That's it's weird, awesome. but it works That's for me brilliant. anyway. <laughs> I used to do it with German with all of like the case endings, but then when I learned them, I was like, okay, what can I do now? Like I know them, let's find something even harder. So I was like, you know what? Russian. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I've now I'm like same few skills for it. Like working at a hospital, I feel like people always just like go to the same ones, which is like cold usually or like yeah something you can feel like a squishy toy but these are so creative wow i think in conversation it helps me to really try to focus on the words that other people are saying like i can see catch the whole the the focusing on something cognitive to just be like let's let's yeah let's get this working like you know <laughs> grease up that brain don't let it get stagnant it's like extreme mindfulness yeah not fun mindfulness, but I'm it's sure it works. <laughs> but it's cool because at the end of it, it's like you've learned something really. I'm like, I'm just thinking, man, I sh I, I should have done something like that. Like I'd know like 20 languages by now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who wants to go next? I have many sensory things in front of me. Squishies. <gasps> it's sadly missing an ear. I don't know how, but... He still works. Are those, there's a squishies? Yeah, they like. That's amazing. My adult Play-Doh. It's scented. What does adult Play-Doh mean? I'm like, it doesn't really mean anything. I just use it for, I'm just, I'm not a child playing with Play-Doh. I guess that's my. Um... Gotcha. Okay. I wasn't sure if it meant like there's some ingredient in there that like. No, I, don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> what does it smell like? This one's cream soda, which I don't even know what that scent is, but it smells good. And so how do you use these like when you're having a dissociative moment? Yeah, I mean, I try to, I try my best to catch it early um, because often my dissociation will just kind of linger otherwise. Um, but I find like, it just kind of keeps me, rounded and like 
the symptom managed, I guess, um, to like have my hands busy also. I sometimes do uh, use cold showers as well. Yeah, I put my face in cold water. I have a hard time getting my whole body in there because I'm extremely averse to cold, but like I'll put my face in a bucket. I can do that. <laughs> I started out warm. That's my trick. And then gradually oh, okay. like, get colder and colder. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to like handle it. Well, that's a good trip trick. I'll have to try that next time. Yeah. Okay, so I I have to show y'all my uh my slug family. So my husband actually started making these for me with her ADHD stuff. And I have a ton of them. This is Jesus. Uh, this is the first one. And this one, um, I use him in therapy. The fidget slugs, as they're called, um, really help me to stay um, present because uh, I have something I can do with my hands. And the, the feeling of the different parts is like, there's a texture there and it's always moving. My littler ones are ones like I used to, when I was in school, I would take right last semester, um, I put one like in my pocket. And then if I was like in, in a lecture, um, I would just use that to, to pay attention and not like zone out and get distracted by other things, which is not really related to dissociation. It's um, really, really helpful to me. And I think also because there's like this animal quality to them, it's not just like, um, like I like it, it feels familiar in a way like there it feels like having a friend almost I'm like this hey sis and I are, are doing therapy together and I there's a part of me that j wants to judge that and it's like oh my gosh you're 33 and you're acting like you're five you need to take a freaking toy with you to therapy yes yes I do angry self-critic like yes you're a judgy mean person and Yes, I am taking my, my therapy slug with me to therapy because Jesus has my back, man. Your emotional support slug. Yes, my emotional I'm, support whatever slug. Whatever you have to do. I didn't know I needed one. Yeah. I don't have a show uh, for this uh, because what I do is I scream. Because I when I dissociate, I feel like I'm, you know, outside my body. So I... Just scream and sort of shock myself back in. So is it like like the vibration of the intense noise that kind of like puts you back? Or is it the audio? I it's the, the volume? No, probably both. What happens if you dissociate like around people? Feeling claustrophobic is what really triggers it for me. In crowds, dissociating things, just yelling in a crowd. Usually those they're already yelling, so it's not a big deal. That is such an interesting thing. I have I would never have thought of it. I didn't know what other people did. You were like, what are the physical things? And I'm like, physical things? You can do that? I used to use self-harm, but can't do that. That's not healthy. So, screaming. Does anybody have anything that they want to add about, like, dissociation or tools? I forgot I even did this. But during, like, exposure therapy, I just doodled. And I don't know why that made it like easier for me to stay present, but it kind of worked. Well, it's also a way to tap into your passive consciousness or your subconscious, um, like directly tapping into that. You know, for artists that we do the, do that kind of thing a lot. We just free association is a is a very powerful meditation tool. I think kind of like linked to that as well. I don't know if anyone else agrees, but I find that dissociation can be almost like a circuit breaker when I'm in really heightened emotional state. So I spoke about anger a little bit in the last episode and I tend to find that I will get more and more angry. I will keep it inside. And then I sort of reach a point where it breaks and my emotions are so intense that the dissociation kicks in and overrides it. And then it will be like a split second change and I will go from being really emotional, really worked up to just completely apathetic. And that's when I know that my dissociation is kicking in. And sometimes it's quite a useful thing to have as well. Like it takes a lot of the emotional charge out of different situations. And I know that if I wait out the way that I'm feeling, eventually I will get that calm. It's just really difficult to get to that point sometimes. I don't know if anyone else can relate. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like association kicks in when I'm, like, very emotionally activated. I think especially if I can't deal with it. 
in that moment. Like, there's nothing for me to do about it. I just have to sit with it like, all right, I have to be here and do this thing that's not in line with this other emotional state. And so the dissociation was like, I right, cool, I got your back. But it was hard because I also couldn't think super clearly. And so it is one of those things that, that like, I feel like can be very adaptive and can be maladaptive. It's sort of, it, it rides this, this line almost in a way. And I, at least my perception of it is I have to try my best to, to ride that balance and like make sure that it, that it is more like adaptive and I don't let it become uh, avoidance. Like I, I do have to go back to whatever that thing was and deal with it at some point. I can't just always be dissociated as a way of getting out of them but it, especially when there's nothing you can do about it in the short term it is a great it's a great tool but i mean i i mean i think that that's why your brain does it right it wouldn't do it if it didn't give you something i think yeah that's, there that's are moments I've, I've been like grateful that i dissociated if that makes sense <laughs> um but especially with anger like if I start to dissociate instead of like feeling that anger super intensely, I'm often like more effective. So it kind of works out as long as I don't get too like, you know, zoned out. But yeah, that can be uh, it's like a, it's like giving you a break. It's like, OK, your your body goes, this is all we can handle. We're just going to turn everything off for a minute. Well, hopefully you got some interesting insights into some of the different things that you can use for uh, managing dissociative episodes. I think my biggest takeaway is that like you can be creative. You know, there are a lot of things that are very popularized, but, you know, find something that is effective and healthy and works for you. You know, it doesn't have to be what works for everyone else. And I think that that's really cool. Every person brought something kind of different to the table today, which was fun. So Anyway, uh, like, subscribe. Uh, we have one more episode for you next week. That's going to be the paranoia part of the last symptom of BPD. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.